when the Prophet ﷺ was sent to this earth, that urgency of the Day of Judgment being around the corner should have already been there without any of the commentary, without any of the other things that the Prophet ﷺ indeed warned us about, of the natural disasters and of the corruption to come. Because the Prophet ﷺ said that I and the hour were sent like these two fingers. Meaning this is the final call to mankind through the Messenger of Allah ﷺ. And also that if you took the history of the world and you compared the time that has passed before the Prophet ﷺ to the time that is left of humanity, it is like the time between the tip of the middle finger and the tip of the index finger. There isn't that much time left. You know, subhanAllah, in this last week, suddenly the discussions about World War III are out there. I'm just going to point out one simple factor. If you lived in Gaza right now, the end of times is already here. World War III has already happened to you. If you live in Khartoum right now, in a Sudan, World War III is already happening to you. If you live in Congo, World War III is already happening to you. If you live in Idlib, World War III is already happening to you. If you live in a significant portion of the Ummah today, where the Muslim world spans, and where disaster is becoming a bound. And what you see when you walk out of your tent, or what resembles your home, and what you feel when you go back, is nothing but chaos and instability, then the discussions about what might transpire in the rest of the world are completely irrelevant to you. And that's why it needs to be that much more relevant to us. If as believers, the Ummah is like one body, and we are supposed to be feeling the pain of the Ummah, then it is already a state of emergency even before World War III arrives at our doorstep. Before we start to feel the possibility of us being expelled from our homes or of something difficult coming upon us like what's coming upon our brothers and sisters. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is actually putting our sincerity to test. If you don't already feel it, then that's actually a bigger problem than whether or not it materializes to the worst of your expectations. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam flipped the paranoia about the Day of Judgment with the urgency of death in two ways. One of them is the hadith of Anas ibn Malik radiallahu ta'ala anhu. He says that once upon a time there was a man who came to the Prophet and kept saying, when is the hour, when is the hour, when is the hour? And the Prophet looked around and Anas radiallahu anhu said he saw a young boy from Banu Shanu'a, from the land of Shanu'a. And he pointed to that boy sallallahu alayhi wasallam And he said alayhi salatu wasalam, if this young boy lives long enough that that young boy would not find old age until you have found your day of judgment regarding Regardless. Meaning what? Whether or not you see death and destruction in the world around you, you will find death regardless. And that is as unpredictable to you as anything else. You could have all the analysts in your life that you want, but you're not going to be able to anticipate when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tests you with that. And the Prophet is saying, instead of sitting there and reading the world, and reading when the end of times is to the point that you start to make your calculations in your head, make your calculations about death and about what you have prepared for that that meeting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because your day of judgment is in that grave regardless. And what you will face there is no less severe than what you will face here. And that's why he said sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that you will be tested in your grave with something similar to the test of a dajjal. The faith that's required for you to be able to pass through the elements of your grave when you're entered into that grave and it squeezes you and the hardship of the angels coming to you and the difficulty of that moment and still being able to process Allah, Muhammad, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Al-Islam, when all of that is happening around you, is just like the faith that is necessary for you if you encounter Al-Masih Al-Dajjal in your life and still being able to see through his tricks and say, Allah, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Deen Al-Islam. So whether you're facing a dajjal here and the elements of a dajjal here, or you're facing death and the elements in the grave there, focus on nurturing that faith in your heart. Stop thinking so much about what's going to happen then. Think about what could happen to us today, what could happen to us tomorrow. Every single morning the phone calls come, every single morning we get the messages about someone that died unexpected. A car accident this morning, a young man, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for him and his family. Elderly people, but the diagnosis was spurred, it got quicker. They were first given a year and now they're given three months. May Allah azza wa jalla give them all shifa. May Allah make it easy for their families. Let's prepare ourselves for that. And let's think about the people that are already living the doomsday of this world that we fear would spread around the world around us. Activate ourselves towards that. Our brothers and sisters in Gaza and in Sudan and our Uyghur brothers and sisters, wherever they are, they're living that nightmare that every Everyone fears that will spread to the world around them. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to be that ummah of one body and nurture in our hearts that faith that is necessary to face the trials of a dajjal and to face the trials of the grave. 